Hey everybody, it's Edie and I am here to quickly show you how to open up your tea bags and uh, get the most use out of them, get the, the biggest size. Um, I, <laughs> I I've been collecting my tea bags and I had them sitting on my kitchen counter to dry out and I think my husband threw them away because <laughs> I went downstairs to start filming or you know to get the tea bags to start filming and the tea bags were nowhere to be found. So. Uh, my dried out tea bags have disappeared and I stuck this one in the oven <laughs> to try and dry it out. Probably not the best idea because now it's like, can you hear that? It's crispy. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, I'm going to show you anyway. I also have one that I just used. This one's really, really wet. I just pulled this out of my cup from my tea. Um, so what you want to do is let your tea bags dry out and it can take a day or so depending on the humidity and the temperature. I do not recommend putting them in the oven <laughs> like I just did uh, because they will get crispy and I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to open this out without tearing it but I'm going to try it and see what happens. But I have another one here that I can use and show you. Anyway, so uh, let these just sit out on the counter or you know wherever you have some space you can put them in the sun and let them dry out now if you put them in the sun or in the oven you'll notice they get some darker spots so if that's the look you're going for then then yay <laughs> but if you if you're trying to avoid the darker spots and you just want them to be even then you just want to let them dry out on your counter or you know somewhere flat and dry and you can just let them dry just like this you don't have to open them up ahead of time you can open them when they're wet. I actually don't normally wait. The only reason I had let them dry out is because I wanted to be able to show you and I wanted the, the tea to just pour out of here and um, then, you know, and show you that way. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't normally let them dry. I'll just go ahead and open them up because you have to rinse them anyway so they're going to get wet again when you rinse them. You have to let them dry once they're empty. And we'll talk about that whenever we get to that point. Um, but you can let them dry out if, if you uh, if you want to be able to just pour the tea like in, straight into the garbage or into the garbage disposal. Uh, then let them dry out ahead of time. I Like I said, I don't ever let mine dry out. I just go ahead and open them up because you have to wash them anyway. Alright, so uh, I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to put a white napkin down here so that I can dump the tea out. Okay, so... You'll see that there's this little staple on the tea bag. Okay. And what you want to do is, I'm going to take an exacto. You can use a kitchen knife or scissors or whatever you've got handy. But you just want to slip your blade of whatever you've got. And you want to hold down on one side <coughs> and unfold. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still getting over this cold or whatever it is that I had. Then you want to kind of hold the other side, the side that you just opened. Slip your blade up underneath the one that's still clamped. And try not to cut your tea bag. That's why I'm going slowly here. Just want to find the edge and get it lifted up a little bit. There we go. And then you just pry that side open as well. Then you can just pull the little staple right out. And you want to be careful not to tear your tea bag. I mean they're they're pretty sturdy. They're not gonna they're pretty uh I'm trying to get this staple out. The tea bags are, are pretty sturdy. you it's not just going to tear. So I have my little staple out, it's still here on the end of my tea tag here and you can keep the tea tag and attach them later if you want or you can just throw them away. So once you have your staple out your tea bag will open up like so. Mine's crispy right here. <laughs> I stuck it in the oven. <laughs> okay so then it'll be folded in half so you'll oh this one's gonna tear because I put it in the oven. I might need to just go on to the other one. It's gonna tear. I'll, I'll go ahead and show you but then I'll do the other one that's not going to tear. Okay, so you unfold it so it'll be long like this. Then, I usually do this under the sink while the water is running 
because it's a lot less messy that way. But this, this little seam, you'll see this little seam right here. One side does not have a seam. And that's how it, you know it's folded. You see that it doesn't have a seam. But when you open it up, you'll see the seam right here. And you just pull that apart. And it comes right apart. Oops, see this one's stuck together because I put it in the oven. But then you'll open it out, you dump this out, and then you just rinse this off. Okay, I'm going to show you with another one that's not stuck together. <laughs> so I'm going to move this. Put a clean napkin down here. Okay, so again, find your little staple. My hands have tea all over them now. Hold one side and pry open the other. Then you hold the side that you just opened and pry open the side that's still clamped. And this is the hardest part right here, just getting this second little side of the staple open. That's the hardest part. Okay, so once you get that open, you can see I just kind of opened it out. There's no, no special formula. Then you just wiggle the tea bag off of the staple. Now like I said, I always do this under running water because I just run mine down the garbage disposal. It's a lot less messy that way, but I'm because of, I'm showing you on camera, I'm not able to do that. So then you unfold it at the top where the little crease was, where your little staple was. You'll unfold that. Okay. Then it's folded in half and you'll unfold that so that it's long. And then you'll have your seam here and you just pull it apart. And sometimes, not all the time, not often, this little section of the seam, one, one side or the other, may tear away. It doesn't always happen. Like this one doesn't look like it would. But on occasion, see like right there, I grabbed it just right. Oh, I'm off camera, totally off camera. I grabbed it just right and I could tear it, but sometimes you'll find that this little side of the seam just tears away and it's like, it, it always tears in a straight line. You don't have to worry about it tearing the rest of your tea bag. So if that comes off, it's okay. Okay, so now I've got this opened up tea bag. Normally I would have been doing this under my kitchen sink, the water would have been running and it would be clean already because I would wash the tea off as I was going. However, I'm on film so I couldn't do that and if you're wondering why what all this is in my tea bag? It's a orange. It's got orange peel and, and stuff in it. Some sort of I don't remember the name of it. Anyway, um, so now what I'm gonna do is let go wash this in the sink and come back and show you what the rinsed tea bag should look like. I'll be right back. Okay, I washed my tea bag, and as you're rinsing, you want to try and keep it as flat as possible. If it gets bunched up or whatever, it's okay. See, like right here, I have this little little folded piece. The tea bag is pretty sturdy, like I said. It's like a little thin piece of fabric. So you want to be careful with it, but if you need to straighten it or what or you know, untangle it somehow, it's it's gonna be fine. Now you may get these little tiny tears. I very rarely ever get a tear in my tea bags, ever. But on occasion, I'll catch it with the, the knife and tear it so you can see I have, I don't know if you can see it. I have a little tiny tear right there. And once it dries, it'll be okay. And you could just collage over that piece or leave the hole in it and use it to hang or, you know, whatever. Make it work. So now what you want to do is while your tea bag is wet, you want to lay it flat. I don't lay mine on towels. I just lay mine straight on my kitchen counter. And they usually dry within you know, an hour or so, depending on the temperature and the humidity. Um, so you just want to lay it out flat, just like that. Lay it on your kitchen counter and just let it dry. Then once it's dry, it will look like this. So these are all completely dry. And you can see I've got a couple of little tears in this one. Oh, I don't know if you can see. There's some little tears in it. Nothing major. Very rarely do they tear. Occasionally you'll get this. This is that same seam that I told you might have occasionally tear off. You can see it's torn right there. And uh, you can either leave it and make it part of your art or you can just tear it off. There's like a little corrugated line right there and it just tears straight off. So if if your tea bag looks like it's falling apart, it's okay. It's just that one seam and that's where it was put together. 
So these are all dry now, and I've got several here. And I wanted to show you a couple of things before we get into some techniques. So you can see they're pretty... Oh, well, I was really pulling on that, but they're pretty sturdy. Like, it's it's at least as sturdy as a piece of paper. So um, it's going to take a little bit of wear and tear. You want to be careful with them, but they're, they're going to be okay. So now what I want to show you is um, the reason you don't want to cut your tea bags. The reason you want to take the staple out is because if you cut it, this is what you're going to end up with. I cut straight across where my tea bag was folded right where the staple is. I cut straight across there, and then whenever I opened it out and laid it flat, this is all that was left. So you can see the size of this one compared to the size of this one, you're losing a lot of tea bag here. That's, you know, almost half again the, the length that you're losing. So you want to make sure that you open out the whole tea bag. Another thing is, this is a family size tea bag. This is the size I normally use. I don't. I never even drank tea before, um, before I got sick. And then my husband drinks tea, and so I would buy the family size tea bags to make him a gallon of tea. But for me, I buy the little individuals for hot tea. So uh, this is the family size tea bags. This is not what we're using for this particular swap, and you can see the difference here. In the oh, there we go in the individual tea bag and the family size tea bag. So they're much, much larger in comparison. So uh, the family size is great if you want to use these for your own art projects, but for this swap we're using the individual size tea bags. And if you, if, don't feel like you have to go out and buy a whole pack of tea bags. <laughs> A whole box of tea bags if you don't normally drink tea. You can go to pretty much any convenience store that sells coffee and they will have tea as well and you can um, you can get like an individual, however many you need for the swap, you can get two individual tea bags from the from a convenience store or if you know someone who drinks tea just have them save you a couple of their tea bags. And you know I recommend having a few just in case, in case you mess up, in case it tears, in case you're not happy with it. You know, just to be on the safe side, you might want to have a few of these. Now, let's talk about how to decorate them. So, once your tea bag is dry and you want to let it dry completely flat, that way you don't get any crinkles and bends. Now, if you do end up with one like this that's that's got a crinkle or a bend in it, just wet it and lay it back flat again or just leave the crinkle in it. Alright, so, um, or you could also run a little mini iron over this, but you need to be careful with that. Pretty much anything you can do to fabric or canvas, you can do to the tea bag. So I'm just using some regular acrylic paint here, and you can paint it. Now you can gesso this ahead of time, or you can just leave it natural. Um, but you want to make sure that you have something underneath your tea bag because it's fabric, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like fabric, so it's porous. So the paint is going to go through it. I'm going to zoom in so you can see here. And you can see right there, I painted here, and then that came through through my tea bag. So it's something that you need to keep in mind that your work surface it, it's going to get paint on it because whatever you put on here is going to kind of soak through a little bit. So if you prime your surface ahead of time, either with gesso or gel medium. You can help prevent that a little bit, but the gesso or gel medium will then go through. So just something to keep in mind for the future. What you could also do is have this on top of a piece of paper, and you could be creating two at the same time. Or um, have two of your tea like if you wanted to do duplicate tea bags. Let's just lay this here. If you wanted to create both of your tea bags at the same time, This is the torn one. Just be careful when you pull them apart. You can see I've got, you'll have exact duplicates of whatever you're painting. And it will still go through. It will go through both layers. Just, just something to keep in mind. So that's regular acrylic paint. And the same goes for craft paint. The regular, ooh, you know, the little cheapy craft paints. Same thing. You can paint directly onto your tea bags with the craft paint. You can stencil. So I'm going to do everything in two layers so that you can see what's going to happen if you try to do two of them. 
one on top of the other. So you could stencil. I'm just going to lay this here. And I'm just using, oh, oh no. <laughs> I just tested this and it worked just fine. Now when I need it to work, it's not going to. Okay, so you can like <laughs> um, stipple. You know how you can stipple. Stipple your paint. Let me see if I can clean this. Okay, I just spent 20 minutes trying to clean that sprayer and it's just not going to work. So, I've grabbed a different spray and again, you can just spray just like you would any other fabric. Now, keep in mind that it may run a little bit because this is like fabric. And while we're talking about the colors possibly running, you can also use watercolor. So I've had some watercolors sitting over here getting soft for a few minutes while I've been working and you can just brush on the watercolor. Now because it is like fabric, it's not going to just blend, blend, blend. Now if you had gessoed or put um, gel medium on here, it would spread and blend more. But let's just take a look here at both layers and you can see, oh, they're sticking together. So you may want to remove it pretty quickly. You can see I've got two layers here of the watercolor, but it's still bled through, but they're the same on both. And then I've got two stars, kind of. <laughs> the star, the stencil didn't work out all that well with the spray, you know, to get an exact duplicate. But everything else so far is working to give me a duplicate. So uh, that's acrylic paint, stenciling, and watercolors so far. You can also collage. So I just have a little piece of a book page here. Just tear that off. And I'm just using some matte gel medium. I'm going to go ahead and remove my bottom layer for a little bit and collage on my... Now you can see I've still got the watercolor on here so it's bleeding just a tiny bit. Not a whole lot though. Okay. Now again, the gel medium has bled through so you may want to wipe that up otherwise your tea bag will stick to whatever you're working on. Now I'm working on a non-stick mat so it may not stick but you just don't want to take that chance. You don't want to take a chance on it sticking long enough to tear your tea bag, especially after you've put all that work into it. So, so far we've got acrylic paint, we've got watercolor, we've got spray ink, and we've got collage. And remember, you can do two layers at once for most things. You can also stamp. Now, I don't know if the stamp ink is going to bleed through or not, but we're going to test it and see. And I'm using archival ink. So I put my stamp on a block so that I would get some good coverage. I mean, some good pressure. There we go. Now, I still have some wet gel medium here, which is... Not great, but let's see if it bled. Barely. You're not going to really get a lot of bleed through on your stamps. But you, it, will, it will still bleed. You're just not going to be able to get exact duplicates by stamping once. You'll have to stamp twice. So let's stamp again where there's no gel medium so that you can see how that looks. And you can just treat these tea bags just like you would any other mixed media background. And you can see right here, it still bled a little bit. Oh, I don't know if you can see. It did still bleed a little bit on my mat, but not a lot. There you go. That's stamping. And if you stamped right over the top of your watercolor or acrylic paint, it's still going to layer just like any other mixed media surface.
there we go. So pretty much anything you can do to paper or a canvas, you can also do with these tea bags. So play around with it. Like I said, have a few extra tea bags on hand just to be on the safe side and just play around with it and see what happens because you may be surprised at how easy these are to work with and you will probably be inspired once you play around with them for a little bit. So try a few different techniques. If you would do it on a paper or a canvas, try it on your tea bag. Just remember, be gentle. You don't have to be you don't have to treat it with kit gloves, but just be careful, be gentle. And there you go. If you have any questions or suggestions or if you discover things that do work or don't work, <laughs> leave it in the comment section for the swap. And also feel free to share photos of your tea bags as they are coming along or after they are completed. And uh, let's get everybody in on the conversation. I hope you enjoy this swap. Remember, you're making two painted tea bags and you will have two partners. So, uh, something to keep in mind whenever you're practicing and playing around. You may actually create something that you like and you can use that for your swap. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.